Okay, we worked really hard to get our bowl blank ready, and now we're ready to do our design. I just want to stress how important it is to have the bowl blank be relatively symmetric. A flat top, flat bottom, and the bottom and the top parallel with each other, because the design is going to follow with that symmetry. You can draw a really great design, but if your bowl blank isn't symmetric, you're not going to have symmetry in your final bowl. So remember, we chose to do a bowl with the inside of the split log facing up, or the pith side up, and the bark side down. And that does simplify the drawing of the design slightly, because now I have a flat top to draw the design on. Whereas if you have the bark side up, you're going to have a curved top to draw the design on. So based on the size of my bowl blank, this is going to be a nearly circular bowl, probably with some handles. And to draw this design, I'm going to use a few things. One is this large compass. I just bought this on Amazon. It just has a place for a pencil here. You'll need some other things to draw with. I just have this yardstick and then, you know, something to make a uh, right angle with is helpful as well. Now, if your bowl is more of an elliptical shape, having some string and a couple finishing nails will allow you to draw an ellipse. But mine's going to be a little bit more circular, so we're not going to use this today. Now, one of the things I like to do is just line up the center of the growth rings. And this is sort of where the pith used to be, but we removed it. And it's going to be approximately here. So now I'm just going to find the center of this line. I have my total dimension of 18 and 3 quarters. So that means my middle should be at 9 and 3 eighths. Now you may not want to use that as the middle of your bowl if you have certain features that you're trying to avoid. For example, I have this area here where there's a small piece of dead wood from that defect that we saw earlier. So I may want to actually have the center of the bowl lean a little bit towards this side in order to avoid this. But we're going to see, kind of draw some rough things on here and decide whether we need to move that center. So I'm just going to pick a point here for a circular bowl and I want to leave a little bit of room for handles on either side and I'm just going to kind of look around here. Now that's a little bit close to the sapwood so I'm just going to shorten this a little bit. Yeah, I think I like that. I've got enough space away from the sap wood here. You don't want to get too close because this wood can be a little bit soft. I also have enough room for some handles on the end. I've also avoided uh, the bulk of this defect over here. Now one thing we could do, because we do have a little bit of extra room here in comparison to this width, is we could make an ellipse. And you can do that with a compass as well. So let me see what that'll look like. So I'm just going to say, what if I extended this bowl by one additional inch on either end? Because that would still leave me a little bit of room for some handles. And in order to make this taper slightly as I go towards the ends, I'll need to start this circle a little bit more than an inch let's say an inch and a half from our old center so now this is going to make a circle that's just half inch less in diameter than the larger one And now all I have to do is connect the lines here in a smooth arc. Mm, 
yeah, it looks pretty good for a slightly oval-shaped bowl. And I still have a little bit of room for some handles over here. I still avoided this defect on right here. Just going to work on an interior rim now. All right, last thing to draw are the handles. It's starting to get dark out here. Now most of my restriction on how wide the handle can be is based on this defect here. So I'm gonna use that as sort of the maximum handle width. I'll pick a point for the handle to kind of curve back to the bowl. And I'll just draw a gentle swoop back over here. Well, I think that's looking pretty good. I'm not sure if the video is picking all of this up because it's starting to get dark. So I'm going to stop here. My next step is going to just be to color this to make it more distinct which part is staying, which part is going. And then we'll talk about how to translate the center of the bowl to the bottom. We'll have to do that tomorrow. Okay, so we've done the basic design of the top, but now we need to draw a bottom. And we need the bottom to be centered on the center of the bowl. And finding the center of the bottom isn't perfectly straightforward because these chainsaw cuts are not necessarily perpendicular to this flat plane that we created on the top. Because of that, we have to account for the off-angled cut when we're measuring from the bottom edge to the middle in comparison to the top edge to the middle. So first thing I'm going to do is just get an accurate measurement from this end to the middle of our bowl. Looks like we're just under nine and a half inches. And next I need some sort of instrument with an exact 90 degree. I'm gonna place that on the flat of the top and then come down to the bottom and see what sort of angle we are off on this chainsaw cut. So I'm looking down at the bottom, and this is touching the bottom edge. But as I look at the top, I can see there's a little bit of air between this edge and the top. It's actually pretty close to a 90 degree cut, but it's not perfect. So because I have about an eighth an inch of air in comparison to the edge that I measured to my middle, that means from this bottom edge, to the middle on the bottom, I need to measure an additional eighth of an inch. So my middle measuring from this end was just under nine and a half inches, which means I'm gonna be just under nine and five eighths inches when I measure from the bottom. So because this log's chainsaw cut was nearly at 90 degrees, the translation of the bottom in comparison to the length from this edge to the top was really only an eighth of an inch. But you could imagine if this was cut at a much further off than 90 degree angle, then this measurement would be significantly different than the measurement on the same side on the top. And now that I have that center line, I'm just going to draw an oval shape on the bottom. Oh, 
Okay, we've got our design done. Got some smooth lines on the top. Oval shaped bowl with some small handles here. And we translated the center of the bowl on the top to the center of the bowl on the bottom. The next step is when it starts getting fun, I'm gonna hollow out the inside of the bowl. I'm also gonna discuss a little bit about whether to hollow the inside first or the outside first, because there's reasons to do both depending on your design. Thanks for watching and happy carving everyone.